Greetings YouTube, it's Sunday. The day has come to install the new uh, TriStar controller. Uh, I've printed myself off a Simpletons to-do list. I'm gonna set it up in 24 volts, so that means I've got to change one of the dip switch settings first. Uh, I was gonna run it 12 volt, but it that doesn't seem like a lot of points. So here's all the connections. I've got to make eight cables, uh, potentially, and also printed myself off a fairly detailed diagram bigger than the one in the manual and you can see I've numbered the connections one two three four uh, these two are for what's called battery sense wires which don't carry a lot of the current but monitor the voltage quite closely so I will be fitting them on it says you don't you don't need to I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to install it without messing around with this too much I am going to get rid of this in a minute so that'll be out of the way so it'll be less confusing on the left I'll just move the camera it, that is the rectifier and from the rectifier it goes to through the meter and then from the meter we end up with oh sorry from the meter we end up with one black and one red cable which is connected here uh, so let me get a screwdriver and remove the old stuff and we'll crack on Maybe move these cables out of the way a bit, which would be nice. Hmm. I, ha I had noticed that there's a connection here which is potentially loose, so I'm just going to tighten that up. Check these connections here. That one looks okay. That one looks good. I'll try and tuck that wire out of the way somewhere. Right, it does say in the manual we have to connect the batteries up first. First, uh, which is from the two cables we just got, those two. Uh, they have to go direct to the battery, according to this. So let's do that first. I have moved my two existing half decent batteries down to the bottom because Pigeon mum's having some more babies and... Right, we're going to use these jump leads for the battery cables as before. Right, that's on. So that's the first two things done off the list. So now uh, let's do six and seven, which is connecting the controller to the batteries. I need some cables to come from the box, just down to there for now. So let me find some cable. Right, okay, to progress, I've decided the best thing to do is you've got these two uh, jump leads here. So there's one end of the jump lead. The other end is up there. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut the jump leads in half and then that gives me effectively two sets. So I'm just going to do that. So that's done. The wires are split and I'm just going to get standing blade. Lovely. Look at that. Beauty. Right. So these are going from the controller to the battery. So that should be connect to one and connect to four. Easy peasy. Okay, so positive. The battery positive goes to number one. I'm just going to check the size of the... You yeah, should have enough. Should have enough. Just make sure this is all the way out. All right, let's just give it a go. Ah, oh, lovely. Sweet. That was super easy. Right, now, there is the negative battery terminal. Easy peasy. Lovely jubbly. Oh, it's nice to have some decent quality sized screws. You know though, all the little controllers and the uh, meter boxes with the tiny little connectors, you're fumbling around trying to get the wire in. Look at that, it's gone in. Sweet. Check it out. I just wanna check because that felt like it has no stop on it. See there? So really what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna cut the wire a bit shorter because it doesn't pay to have it all sticking out, does it really? Oh, that's better, look. 
nothing poking out. Let's just check the positive. Yeah, we've got a bit poking out there, so while we're doing it, might as well. Yeah, that's good. Look, there's nothing. Nothing's poking out the back, so let's just deal with the. I'm just going to deal with the dip switch while we're there. This is what we need then. So at the moment, we've got it set up for 12 volts. I'll just check that. So two down, three up. Yep, two down, three up. And we need, we're going to change it to 24 volts. So dip switch two needs to be up and three down. So let's just switch them over. Two up, three down. And this is the dip switch settings for the battery charging. And I, I wanted to set it at 14 volts. I thought that was good. So you can see uh, dip switch four, five, six need to be in the down stroke off position. And they are. So that's the first two wires. So they, I'm going to actually connect them to the batteries now. We've got two 12 volt batteries in series. Actually saw the lights come on then. So at the moment we have an amber light. Let's have a look in the manual what that means. I'm going to get the camera close in on those lights and then I'm going to disconnect it and then we'll reconnect to the battery up and see. Should leave it a minute see if it changes at all. It says controller startup, green, yellow, red, one cycle. So it's done the startup, but I'm trying to work out what the yellow light actually means. Give me a minute, I'll come. Oh! There you go, the green lights eventually come on. Anyway, I can't let that stop. Let's just carry on and do what we've got to do. So now we can connect. Yeah, now we connect the dump load to this. These are perfect for the dump load. So I'm going to make two other cables up and use these. Right, we've got these crappy little meters. And I want to install one of these temporarily to see that the dump load's working. So I'm going to do that according to the instructions. Connector 2 goes to the positive of the dump load and then connector 3 here goes to the negative of the dump load. So this meter is going to act as an intermediary. So let's connect that up. This will simply enable us to see if the dump load is working correctly and if it is how much power is going to the dump load, which will be good information to know even if we just know it and learn from it and then you know every time it's dumping power it's going to be dumping a certain amount but it's not beyond the realms of possibility to actually integrate this into the it's not beyond the realms of uh, possibility to integrate this actually into the front of the because there'd be nothing stopping you hacking the front of that open although that does look fairly nice don't it so i'm not not sure i'd want to ah interesting that that way makes the led a lot more visible Right, so this meter will only spring to life, theoretically, when the battery voltage goes over 28. That's the idea. So the turbine should be able to go to 28 and then a little switch inside here should flick and then dump that down these two cables into the heat bucket. One long term issue I've got to deal with is the leg snapped off the rectifier. That is something that definitely needs dealing with. That, that holds it on fine, but Really, I need to buy another one. Just a reminder, these are the three wires coming in from the turbine. Three wires from the turbine to the rectifier through the meter. And then we've got the DC coming out, one here and one here. And then we've got those cables in there. So the only cable I need to put in are two cables going from here, uh, where it says sense positive and negative. I've got to do two cables to the batteries and they can be really small cables because I was reading in the manual that they hardly carry any current. So they're just like a sensor cable. You don't need special ones, can make them myself. That there is for a temperature probe. I'll keep an eye out on an aftermarket one if possible. There's a good old fashioned RS232 connector there. And that I'm pretty sure is a, called an RJ. I'm not sure if it's an RJ45 or an RJ100. Anyway, that's not my expertise. I'm gonna go have a cup of tea and then I'll 
finish those two wires. I have got this broken solar panel I want to test, so that may be a good day to try that because whatever happens, it should produce over 30 volts. And to do that, I would simply have to connect the solar panel DC negative there and the DC positive there, and th that the meter will still do its business. What we do, obviously, with the solar panel, you don't need a rectifier, do you? Because it's producing. A DC electricity you know in the first place whereas with the wind turbine that's a three phase AC so that's coming in and then the rectifier switching over I'm gonna have a cup of tea and then I'll be back all right so we've got this yellow light still on the only real mention of the yellow LED is here look where it says yellow on 35 to 60 percent state of charge that may be about right the meter saying 25.89 so that may be right but let's carry on sorry let's carry on and now we can use these two new leads that I've made uh, the jump leads to connect to the dump load which is going to be off here okay so I just need to sort that wire out okay, so this is the intermediary and this goes to the dump load And that's it. So that's the battery sense wires installed. Please note the use of uh, red cable where it shouldn't be used because I didn't have any black. So bear in mind. So that positive there, negative there. And that's those two little connectors there so it's ready to go i'm going to try and connect up that solar panel if we can do that then it would be very nice to see this spring to life uh, because the solar panel even though it's crap it should produce 35 volts and the solar panel will have to be connected to these wires one there and the other one here so let's try and do that right so we've plugged in the beat up old solar panel just want to confirm it is making some voltage so that's good when I connect it up I'll concentrate on the meter to see if we're getting anything so there's the badly beaten up solar panel and that comes in to this jump lead so all I have to do theoretically is connect this cable to the solar panel All right, we've got something coming in. We've got something coming in from the very broken solar panel. It's very good news, my friends. We appear to have a green and a yellow light. The yellow light means the battery is at a low state of charge, between 30 and 65%, and the green light, I believe, just means that the system's charging. So that's very good news. Interesting to know that the solar panel is actually making something. Even though it's laying on the floor, and it's very overcast it's still doing something so that's quite interesting you can see some severe cracks in it and it's very dirty so my friends what i'm going to do is have a celebratory cup of tea and we'll leave this hopefully cranking up nicely but this this will be a definite victory because this thing for the wind turbine will be great what i really want to see is this come on at 28 volts and just send a little bit of power down to the bucket this isn't going to be the permanent fixture but this is just to help us know that the dump load is actually working. So that's creeping up. Amazing to see. As far as I'm aware, I've got the dump load to come on above 28 volts. But bear in mind how knackered the solar panel is. We'll come back in a bit. Well, look, it's starting to flicker into life, look. How cool is that? Because theoretically, the, as I showed you on the multimeter, the solar panel is going to want to put in 35. So, right, so the green light is flashing. Let's get the manual, green light flashing. I think that's this thing here. Hang on a sec. PWM absorption, green, blinking, half second on, half second off. As you can see, this uh, the meter is definitely flicking into life. 
those meters this meter will only come on with six volts going through it so strange how that that's gone up a fair bit the wattage that's coming in obviously that is a broken solar panel it's not going to set the world on a light but it's very interesting to know that it's still capable of doing that and it's consistent look, with the amps and it's not even in direct sunshine so if you've got a beat up old solar panel it, it may still have some use it wants to come on for sure that'd be amazing 27 point oh the voltage has just gone up on the panel to 28.18 temporarily i've got to say my friends i think that is working a treat that is working a treat and the best thing is when we want to plug in the turbine all we've got to do is plug the uh, positive from the rectifier in here because that's where the positive from the solar panel and then the positive the negative from the wind turbine in this one here and we'll be we'll be laughing because the turbine excuse me the turbine is in its element when it starts going over 28 volts it just wants to go 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 we'll have this meter sorry keep going on going on about it and that isn't going to be the permanent install I just want to check the dump loads working properly and I believe it's already starting to work because that's flickering on so it's trying to send something I'm going to call it a day on that video but I'm very happy with that and while there's no wind I'm just going to leave the solar panel plugged in to do its thing uh, we've got the LED indicators if there's any problems the manual obviously we've got the battery status here so the green <clears throat> um, it means PWM absorption and then if it was fast blink it means equalization state and if it's one second on one second off its float state we should leave that on but that is a successful installation of the tristar ts45 controller sweet i'll see you soon can't wait to get the wind turbine plugged into it so there's supposed to be wind over the next few days so that will be the true test of it but i'm happy so far so good cheers